Hello and welcome to the OpenMX video tutorial series. In this video, we will be discussing the concept of a latent variable in preparation for modeling latent variables and confirmatory factor analysis in OpenMX. Latent variables are an interesting concept that present themselves in many fields of study. The idea of latent variable modeling is that we have something we are interested in, but that thing is either very difficult or impossible to directly measure. What we have, though, are indicators of that something we are interested in. An indicator is just something that a latent variable is suspected to influence. In psychology, depression could be considered a latent variable that manifests itself in the measurable indicator variable of crying. In political science, political ideology could manifest itself as the way individuals vote on multiple topics. In the medical sciences, a patient's quality of life could manifest itself in the patient's physical health. These are just a few examples, but the concept of latent variables can be applied to many fields. In order to understand how we can model a variable that we have not directly measured, we can use this path diagram. As you can see, we have four variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. We have modeled the variances of each of these variables, but we have also modeled the covariances of these variables. Notice that we have modeled six covariance paths, thus modeling all possible relationships between these variables. But maybe there is a way to simplify this model. Maybe we do not need all these paths. That is where latent variable modeling comes in. In latent variable modeling, we assume that the covariances between our variables of interest are all due to the fact that something else is causing the variables to occur and thus any relationship between these variables is simply due to variation of that something else. On the right we have an example of a latent variable model known as a factor analysis. Notice that the covariances between our predictors are gone. Instead an underlying latent variable or factor f is causing the variation in our variables. Disregarding the means paths this model actually uses less parameters to describe the same system, netting us more degrees of freedom. This is the system of equations modeled by this path model. We have a mean for each manifest variable. We also have a path from our latent variable, f, to each of our manifest variables. In latent variable modeling and factor analysis, these values are known as factor loadings. We also have an error variance for each of our manifest variables. This variation is the amount of variation within an individual variable after we have accounted for the common variance between these variables. Finally, we have a variance term for our factor. To allow us to properly estimate this model, this factor is assumed to be normally distributed. Let's look at a concrete example of how factor analysis builds a latent variable from variation within and between manifest variables. Let's replace our manifest variables here with real-world behaviors of individuals. Let's use crying, sleeping, eating, and talking. We know from psychological research that all these things can be symptomatic of depression. Let's take crying for example. Some portion of the variation within individuals crying is due to how depressed they are. I will mark this as blue. However, this is not the only reason people cry. People also cry when they are happy, as well as when they are angry. The same is true for each of these other variables. While some portion of the variation within these variables is due to depression, there are other things that cause variation in these variables. But notice that the only common color that is, the only source of common variation between these variables is when people are depressed. Think of each of these manifest variables giving us a small snapshot of what depression looks like. We can then use those individual pieces to reconstruct what depression looks like given these indicators. Notice that once we do this, the variables now have little to nothing in common. What is left over is considered to be due to error variance or unique variance of each of these variables. Also notice that some variables gave us more information about what our latent variable looked like than others. These variables would then have a stronger standardized loading than the other variables. If our latent variable accounts for enough of the variation both within and between these variables, then we can say that our model fits the data. There are multiple measures of fit, such as RMSEA, CFI, and TLI, 
We will go over these in a later video. Let's model a single factor model using OpenMX. Let's load OpenMX. Read in our data. And inspect our data. We can see that we have four manifest or indicator variables. What we do not have is our latent factor. That will be added later within the OpenMX model. Now we can store the names of these variables as manifest variables. But now we have something new. To specify a latent variable in OpenMX, we have to simply specify a vector of names of each of those latent variables. As I only have one latent variable here, I will only use one name, F1. We can then begin to specify our model. This chunk of code creates a single latent variable factor analysis of the data x1 to x4. We have named this model one factor model. It is a RAM type model. Manifest vars is our manifest variable names. Unique to models with latent variables is the latent vars argument. In the latent vars argument, we specify the names of our latent variables. We can then treat these variables like any other variable in our model. We can then build a path from our latent variable, f1, to each of our manifest variables. These are our factor loadings. We can then model the error variants of our manifest variables as well as the variance of our factor. For this model to find a solution, we must fix the variance of this latent variable, or one of the factor loadings, to 1. This will be explained in a later video. We then add our means paths to our manifests. We can then close this model with an MX data statement. Next, we can run this model and get a summary. Here we can view the factor loadings of this model. In the next video, we will be discussing model fit and different fit indices. Thanks for watching.